Here's people thinking about, again, ways of looking at our mind. There's a multitude of approaches. And remembering why, well, you know, well, I mean, the Buddhist view is, it seems surprising, but let's look at it, that whatever goes on in our mind is the main source of our happiness, stability, or craziness and suffering. Sounds a bit shocking, but it's really good to look at this. So if we take that and would like to work with it, then, the, as I said, there's a multitude of ways of doing it. And one of the approaches, it's kind of interesting, the Tibetans have, do this. We say, you know, oh, I am so angry, I am so depressed, I am so hopeless, I am this, I am that. But, 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 but there's an approach that where you can say, there is anger, you know, there is jealousy, there is love. You, you be more objective, get this sort of the central player I out of the picture and be more objective and observe your mind. Then it seems more, we seem, we seem, I think, more capable of then seeing it and then owning it, you know, rather than identifying when I am angry, we paint the whole of ourselves with this one brush. And that's a big problem. So it's, it's a nice approach. But again, of course, it all starts with, it's based on this awareness of what is happening in the mind, Le learning the skill to not just pay attention to the outside world, but as we are living in the outside world, to have part of our mind observing the inside world, analysing, observing, you know, and then deconstructing and then changing. That's the job, you know, the source of our own stability and happiness. And then, of course, our ability to help others.